32-bit versus 64-bit. What's the difference? What are the advantages to both? I'm Joe Levi with Pocket Now, and on this episode of the Pocket Now Power User, we're going to talk about what you want on your next smartphone or tablet. When we're talking about 32 versus 64 bit, the first thing that we have to do is talk about bits. What are they? Well, in computers, we run on binary. Binary is one and zero, on or off. Those are bits. Pretty simple, right? So how much or what is 32 bit? Two to the 32nd is four gig. An operating system that is built around a 32-bit architecture can address up to four gig of RAM. There's some overhead there, so the actual number may be a bit lower than that. And I know what you're thinking, hey, four gig, that's a lot, that's a ton. I don't have that much stuff running. I don't have any huge things, video editing software that I need it. So what's the big deal? Well, you forget your operating system itself plus any skin or customization that you have on top of it, whether that's Sense or whether that's you know custom ROM skin, whether that's uh, LG stuff, Samsung's TouchWiz, any of that all has to be loaded up into RAM and run from RAM. It's what you work in all the time, so it's gotta be in RAM, it's gotta be fast. So you can see that four gig maximum capacity is probably now half that. Okay, you're saying, okay, no, 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 Joe, hey, look, it's a smartphone, it's a tablet, it's for productivity, it's for phone calls, it's for me doing my job, it's for me reading an ebook. You're absolutely correct. Some people play games and whatnot on it, and for them, you guys who don't play games need to be thankful. We've got all these people playing games, and all these game manufacturers out there writing them. And they're making these beautiful 3D immersive environments, and if you haven't played some of these games, Go do it, it's amazing what they're doing with technology these days. They're doing that from the development standpoint, they're playing that from the end user standpoint, that's your beta testers. They are testing everything that you are going to get in the future, the near future, today. Your smartphone, even though you might not think it is, is a 3D immersive environment. You've got wallpaper in the background, You've got icons and words on top of that with shadows on top of those or behind the text as an extra layer in there. You might have an app drawer that sits on top of that. You might have a notification shade that you pull down that sits on top of that. Even Apple current stuff has this really cool tilting thing where you look at it and depending on how you tilt the device in your hand, it kind of shifts the background and the perspective of the icons to the background. We've got this lighting, the shadows, this, does that sound an awful lot like a game? It does, because it's using the same techniques and technologies. So even though you're not running a game, you're taking advantage of all the stuff that we've learned from all of the game things. What does that mean? It means now your OS that takes up some of your RAM is going to take up even more of your RAM. And since your operating system's getting bigger and your apps aren't getting smaller, there's only one thing you can do and that's increase the amount of RAM that you have. But when we're talking 32-bit, our ceiling is four gig. We're approaching that ceiling very quickly. So what do we do to get around it? Gotta go up. So 64-bit computing, back to bits. Two to the 64th is like 16 billion gig. How do we get there? 32-bit right now is hardware, it's software, it's drivers and apps. To get to 64 gig, we gotta start with hardware. Apple's already got it. Android, probably this year, within the next calendar year. We gotta have the hardware. Once we have the hardware, we've gotta have the OS. You can run a 32-bit app in a 64-bit environment. I don't wanna see people arguing Apple's doing it better, Android's doing it better. There are advantages and disadvantages to both. And we need to be thankful for the other side for doing what they're doing because it's pushing our side, whichever side that may be, to progress, to improve, it's great. 64-bit has definitely some RAM advantages that we've talked about ad nauseum here. There are other reasons why 64-bit is such a good thing. Now, 64-bit has lots and lots of nuances, caveats, and components to it. We've just talked about memory addressing. Please, 
if you've got knowledge and expertise in some of the others, because we really don't have time to talk about all of them here today, go down to the comments, share that knowledge and expertise about why 64-bit has advantages over 32-bit, but share your knowledge and expertise and let's keep the conversation going down there. So there's what you need to know about 32-bit versus 64-bit, at least when it comes to smartphones and tablets. If you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends on your favorite social media. To make sure you don't miss out on the next episode, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date. I'm Joe Levi. Thanks for watching.